And let's go on a little bit farther here. Okay. Um, in an enthymeme, an enthymeme is a rhetorical syllogism. All right, I'm going to take this off here. It's part of um, then the uh, verbal expression of a deductive argument. An enthymeme is a rhetorical syllogism, or we could say it is a syllogism with one premise or conclusion left understood. To find enthymemes in writing, what you need to learn to look for, I say in writing, but really in discourse, look for premise identifiers and conclusion identifiers. So you learn, you train yourself to listen for because, since, so, therefore, thus, and so. Um, in other words, like that. Um, so you listen for that because there will be an enthymeme there. People don't generally speak in syllogisms unless they are wanting you to see the formal um, form of the argument itself and be very detailed in making that argument. Um, when you're listening to an enthymeme, though, you do need to understand that there's a part missing, and it's important that you figure out what was left out, and based on that, what the, uh, whether the argument is valid or not. Because again, in deductive argument, validity is the key concept. Uh, you, the way you do that is by determining which terms appear only once. Use those terms to create a statement that would make the syllogism valid if possible. All right, so for example, some students didn't win the race because they don't have medals. All right, let me put that up. Some students didn't win the race because they don't have medals. All right, so remember again, you listen for the premise or conclusion identifiers. The word because is a premise identifier. I've pointed out to you a couple of times that when you have a premise identifier, what follows will be a premise. What comes before it will be a conclusion. So we know that one premise is missing. Okay? They don't have medals. Is a premise. Therefore, some students didn't win the race. Okay, now the next thing you do is look for which term is used twice. Now, in this case, because it's stated the way people normally talk, we don't have two of the same term. We have they, we have medals, we have students, and we have win the race. But since you're, you've studied English before, you know that the pronoun needs an antecedent. And in this case, they refers to students. Okay? Some students didn't win the race because they don't have medals. So students is used twice here. Okay? Here's your conclusion. Win the race has to be used twice. So don't have medals would be your uh, middle term here. Um, students who win the race have medals. Now you might be thinking, well, students 
then we used it three times. But I only put that just to make a sentence that made sense, okay? Um, students who win the race have medals. This is the term, win the race, have medals. All right, now, we do concern ourselves with validity with an enthymeme. So in this case, um, they don't have medals is an E statement. No students have medals. Actually, it'd be some. It would be an, uh, an I, an O statement. Um, some students don't have medals. So this is an O. Students who win the race have medals. So that would be an A statement. All winners, all race winners have medals. Well, there's an A. And then the conclusion, some students didn't win the race. Some students are not race winners. That's an O. And it is a figure, well, the middle term, um, metal havers, metal havers. Okay, so there's your middle term. Some are not metal havers, so that's an, um, it's an OA02. Um, but the bigger deal is, first of all, does the number of negative premises equal the number of negative conclusions? We have an O statement, which is negative, and an O conclusion. A is affirmative, so we have one negative premise, and we have one negative conclusion. So no fallacies there. Our middle term is distributed in this statement. Um, and then in the um, conclusion, when the race is distributed, and when the race is distributed here, because this is an A statement, all students who win the race have medals. So this is a valid syllogism. We tested it by the rules. That's the way an enthymeme works. All right. Um, you can also use counterexamples on enthymemes. Counterexamples to syllogisms show them to be invalid, but counterexamples to enthymemes may also demonstrate that the assumed statement is false. Okay, so let's take a look at a syllogism or, or I'm sorry, an enthymeme or two. Let's take a look at an enthymeme or two. All right, all men are mortal, so all angels are immortal. All men are mortal, so all angels are immortal. Okay, we want to take a look at that. First of all, um, if we just stick with the mortal, immortal arrangement here, we're going to change these two and say created and uncreated. And so we see here um, that this, this enthymeme is invalid because of a problem with the form. All men are created, so all angels are uncreated is obviously false and exposes the problem. Um, a worse example, all men can reason, so all angels are brutes or idiots following that same form, okay? Then we can also consider this. Um, here's another enthymeme.
course God exists. Belief in a deity is one of the most ancient traditions of men. Okay, now we're making a false assumption here. And the false assumption is that ancient traditions are therefore true. Okay, we could say the same kind of argument following the same form by simply changing God to fairies. Of course fairies exist. Belief in fairies is one of the most ancient traditions of men. Okay, so there, with a the counterexample, we have demonstrated um, that uh, the, the enthymeme is invalid. Okay, we're going to stop right there.